In previous videos we have addressed how sticks, stones and gallows of sweat were the tools necessary to create these lines. But a completely different matter is to outline the way that these lines were supposed to be drawn. Extremely long distances, a complex orography and a desert's monotony uh, were difficulties that had to be faced and overcome to create such enigmatic designs. And certainly, they did not possess the technology that we enjoy nowadays, such as satellites, uh, design softwares and uh, topographic tools that would assist or would have assisted these people in this task and would have made it so much easier for these builders. What is clear though is that they did possess the means to make it possible, otherwise these wonderful structures wouldn't even exist. Kilometric lines, gigantic arrows, gargantuan rectangles and beautiful yet complex drawings that needed an even more complex planification worthy of the most ambitious civil engineering projects nowadays. We shall begin by addressing the terrain's orography, as this gigantic tapestry in which these beautiful drawings were printed ought to have been outlined methodically in order to draw just a single line. On it, each terrain elevation or depression had to be perfectly described. For that, it was indispensable having some kind of tool that allowed them to observe the slopes and their inclination. Those tools are not with us today, but it seems obvious and clear that they had to exist one way or another. Perhaps simple wooden plummets were uh, good enough for this purpose. Tools which could have been manufactured by using some straight sticks, uh, a rope and a small stone as a weight. But it is unlikely that the mere use of plummets was enough to achieve all this, as they also needed to measure uh, the distances between different points in the desert. Extremely long equidistant ropes could have been used to achieve this purpose. Strategically placed vertical stakes were also used. These stakes have been observed by many a researcher, including Luis Cabrejo, who is co-author of our scientific article. Another indispensable element they certainly must have had out of necessity, and perhaps the most important of them all, schematics. You know, and a scale map that allowed them to reflect each zone uh, of the desert accurately in order for them to project the plans that they had for these lines. Let us take into account the fact that there are lines that join two zones together, zones that are kilometers away from each other, and we have already mentioned this in previous videos. It is true that they can be observed from nearby hills, but it is important to add that they could only be seen from certain perspectives. Something that allows them to be seen clearly, but which makes their drawing much more complicated. Due to this, these complex uh, drawings had to be planned ahead of time, using a small map which would have reflected the distances between each point of this intricate design. But we still wonder, how could they draw such straight lines? This led many investigators to consider mad theories, but nothing further away from the truth, as simple stakes and a keen eye were the basic tools needed to achieve such grand project. Two men and three stakes. One of these stakes would be placed in the middle, acting as some kind of iron sight or wooden sight for a revolver barrel. Um, to one side of the stake, meters away, another stake would be placed uh, previously by this hypothetical foreman that we are going to address. Uh, needlessly to say, a person with a keen eye, this foreman would have to measure the distance just by looking at the lone stake. And certainly another person would be on the opposite side with a third stake. This person would move left to right according to the foreman's instructions. As soon as this third stake was planted, the process would start again, as many times as required. The foreman would then walk to the next lone stake, right in the middle. The other person uh, would advance a determinate number of steps in the same direction, leaving an already placed stake as a reference. He would then pick up the stake and, looking at his supervisor, attempt to follow his instructions as closely as possible. It is simple, but it is extraordinary nonetheless, as the human eye is much more keen and accurate than we would think. Using this technique, they achieved a straightness that uh, consists of less than one mistake per kilometer, which is actually quite impressive. But on we go, as the drawing of geoglyphs is a completely different matter. This intricate designs required blueprints in order to be drawn accurately, as we have mentioned before. The whole area had to be meticulously analyzed and covered by uh, squares made of stakes and thick ropes. 
set squares were a faithful representation of other smaller squares drawn in the schematics made by this hypothetical foreman. From there, the drawing was relatively simple, as the square divisions made the work uh, much, much more simple. And we still do say relatively simple, as this has been a mere summary of how the Nazca lines were designed. This became much more complex when the terrain wasn't homogeneous. Moreover, uh, we are all well aware of the huge gap between theory and practice in the world of engineering, as it is one thing to describe it and a completely different thing to carry it out. But there's still plenty to say about this interesting topic, but those are details that we're going to be postponing for future videos. And now, as per usual, smash the like button if you've liked the video, subscribe if you haven't, and if you please, and don't forget to hit the bell so you are aware of all future episodes, each of which will draw you closer and closer to the answer of the biggest question of them all. What are the Nazca lines? This is Alberto Escudero representing our chairman Carlos Enrique Hermida and this has been Salvar Until the next time. Solo en YouTube.